Today we want to talk about how a typical vertical well is laid out and constructed. So let's go ahead and look. And this is going to be a cross-sectional view. So like, so say here's the ground level. All right. And here's maybe, you know, the ocean over here. So this is, all right. So what you do is you start to drill the well. And when the day you start drilling is called the spud day. It's very important because the, you lease in legal terms and all that when you have to drill the well by, so you have to record that. So when you drill the first part of the hole, you, the well, you start with a big hole, all right? And you drill that to about a thousand feet or, or less and to get you below the drinking water zone. So maybe drinking water up here, shallow. So you drill below that, uh, those zones and there's a certain depth. And then you run a piece of pipe in there. And that's called the surface casing or surface pipe. And that might be like an 11 inch piece of pipe. Okay, and you cement that in there with cement between the hole and the pipe. Now this protects all the drinking water from being contaminated by the drilling. All right, so once you get that part for the next part is to go ahead and drill deeper. Now, depending on the depth of the well that you're planting and the uh, pressures, you may have to set an intermediate string of cases. So let's look how that works. So you go ahead and drill a little bit further till you get into some of the higher pressures or when the pressure is starting to get high and you may stop drilling there and put another piece of pipe and this is called the intermediate string or intermediate casing. Now, not all wells have this, but it depends on the pressures that you're drilling through and how deep. So you put the intermediate string of pipe, that might be a nine and five eighths inch for example. And then you cement that up. Again, you pump a lot of cement. Now this gives the well integrity. It protects the pipe and hole by putting that cement. All right, so now you're gonna go ahead and continue drilling until you reach your targets where you think the oil or gas is. So you're gonna go ahead and drill down, way down here. All right, so when you reach the, the total depth of where you plan to drill, you call that the TD or total depth. All right, now as you're drilling, you're gonna to have to log the well to see if there's any oil there. So you have a logging tool that you run in the well. Let's, let me give you a little explanation of that. All right, here's an example of where the drilling rig is. And on the drilling floor, there's a rotary table that spins the pipe and there's a rig Kelly bushing. So we call it the rig Kelly bushing. And that, you measure how far above the ground level that, that rig Kelly bushing is. So that might be like 40 feet. And then you also measure how far that is above the sea level. So that might be another uh, 100 feet. So you always start your log depth here as you're logging, it's all referenced to there. So you have to know the depths. You have to have your reference depth. Okay, so once you log it, you're gonna see the formation. So like usually the formations are laid down horizontally, maybe with a little dip to them. And it's just layers and layers of rock that you drill through. You know, it just keeps going. You're just going through layers and layers. Okay. So say this might be a non-permeable rock. So it's not, not going to have any oil or gas or water in it. This might be a, a non, uh, this might be another non-permeable layer. All right, so when you log it, it's gonna tell you if there's oil or gas in there. So say, uh, this is the non-permeable layer. All right, so say there's oil here. So you're gonna see oil on the log. You're gonna see oil on the log, there's oil right there. And it's all up here, man, we got a lot of oil. We're all excited, we found a bunch of oil in this level. And there could be a fault or something that traps the oil here. Oil always wants to float up as high as it can until it gets trapped. And that's because oil is lighter than water. So the water is always at the bottom. The water is always at the bottom and the oil is at the top. Now this zone might just be full of water, so we don't want to mess with that one. And this one, this zone right here might be full of gas. 
All right, so we logged the well and we see that there's oil and gas in there. So now we have to complete the well. If, it's, if it has no oil and gas, we call it a dry hole and we plug it. But now we're gonna complete it. And to complete it, we run another string of pipe called the production casing. And you run that all the way down to the total depth or below the last productive zone right here. So you run that pipe down there. So that might be like a seven inch pipe. All right, again, you cement it. Seam up this annulus space. That keeps the hole from uh, caving in and it also isolates the water zones from the oil and gas zones. You don't want the water zone leaking down here into the oil that would contaminate the oil. You don't want that. So the cement isolates all the zones. All right, so we've logged it, we've cased it. Uh, we've got the production casing down here. So we wanna go ahead and finish completing the well. So we're gonna decide we wanna produce the oil. We don't wanna do the gas. We got more money in the oil. So we're gonna shoot holes through the cement and the casing. We're gonna blow these holes with a big explosive gun. Now that's gonna let the oil come in the well. So the next thing we do is we run the production tubing. It's called, it's a smaller diameter pipe. That would be maybe like a two and seven eighths inch pipe. And then we put a packer, which is a mechanical device that seals the annulus of the well. So as the pressure comes up and the oil goes up, it won't get here and it can have uh, problems in blowing out the well if that high pressure gets up there. But anyway, that's how it's done. Hope that was interesting. And just call me if you have any questions.